Bit Nerds is your daily YouTube card game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. All right, you guys, it's Wednesday in Las Vegas, and we are ready for a brand new episode of the Bid Nerds, your daily nerd on the most interesting cars from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites like Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, B-Car Market, and more. My name is John Polnick. Uh, we are doing it live, like they say. Uh, we are excited tonight. we got a big show for you guys. Uh, reconciliations are going to blow your freaking mind from last week. Uh, we've got Switcher Gary behind the big, the big board in the back there right because he's no longer switcher jesus he's just not cool my partner michael deeb in san francisco that's oh wait, you blew mental we were hey. so close look at this we I, okay um now i've got to introduce the cool guest that we have tonight because <clears throat> we already showed him not you you're always here i mean when you're not oh, like yeah. having stomach issues and have to do Ooh. the show from the can uh that you may have tell you may how or, much lighter i am <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. No, guys, we have a really cool guest that we've harangued into doing this. He came down to see the studio, and I'm like, yeah, come and be on the show. He's like, what are you talking about? You, this guy is the guy that your let's see here, how did he say, let's, how do we do this, that your dad wants to be with and your mom wants to be like? Is that how you said to do it? I think it was flipped. Oh, it was flipped. You're yeah. right. Yeah, that's much better. That's much better and much more true. Welcome to the show, Rich Robletto. Did Correct. I say it correctly? You're right. Very good Man, job. thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you hey, for Rich. being here, Rich. Rich, I know even less about you than the audience does. How the hell did you get shanghai into getting in the studio tonight? Like, where? What bar were you drinking in when mental hit you over the head? It was a. Uh, it was a. It wasn't a bar. It was the van. The panel. Van. <laughs> yes. And, uh, free candy. The sequel. Oh no, no, no one falls for free candy. You had to like free tires. You know, Kirk you got to appeal to the market. <laughs> well, here's the thing John, about that van. John's we knew how much it's worth, right? Yeah. yeah. John, John slid the door and he looked at me. He goes, "Trick or treat?" I'm like, "Treat." He goes, "Come on up." That guy looks like bid nerd material right there. If I ever saw God. someone, uh, Rich oh is the God. owner of Acclaim Realty Group. Did I say that correctly? Acclaim Real Estate. Or Acclaim Real Estate. Much much cooler when he says it. Uh, and uh, he's just a general all around great fella. You do a monthly event at the Red Rock Country Club where we do Vegas Auto Fest. Tell us about that real quick. Uh, so the uh, the event is called Cigars in Conversation. It's just a uh, collision of community with guys that want to smoke uh we've had incredible guests our guest last week was the governor of nevada right so it's um just a cool thing to do to get away before you go home six to eight open to anybody uh the amazing thing is is once you go into that event you've got everybody from a bathroom attendant to some guys worth nine figures and you can't tell the difference i literally told uh kind of said to the governor excuse me i, I gotta get to the bar yeah <laughs> i didn't even know who it was right i'm just like there's yeah. one rule don't be an asshole and i blew it right yeah, when i got yeah, there yeah. <sighs> all right well i'll do J better J next J time J yeah J to qualify that remark had you known it was the governor of nevada you still would have told him to move and get out of your way because you were trying Actually, to you, you you would have been rude you would have been ruder if you knew he was a politician all right yeah so everybody in the room knows me is what you guys are saying i get it <laughs> all right guys uh for those of you who are out there watching the show welcome thanks for being part of the nerd herd if you haven't just hit the subscribe like or notification button yet now is the time to do so what do we we got some people joining us in the chat already randy bloom lucas picard look at it. he's like yo 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 i love the, uh, chris is on board already you know look the nerd herd one thing you don't know about rich we've got a bunch of crazy people yes. who are so around much better world. at around the world yeah from new zealand and, yeah, yeah yeah and they're all so much better at this than we are it's embarrassing but uh we learn a lot from them and we have a great time making the show because of them the nerd herd is where it's at so uh all right let's get to the show last week we made some pretty incredible uh we talked about some pretty incredible cars and made some crazy predictions actually you know what michael deeb one yeah, the, the most important thing i'm forgetting yeah the Go most on. important thing gotten classic Go of las vegas 
right? The logo's right above your head. God and Classic, God and Portion of Las Vegas. They support the nerd herd. They are part of the nerd nation. If you yourself are in the market for a classic Porsche uh, or even a modern Porsche, or if you have an old Porsche, you need it fixed or a new Porsche that need it fixed, or you need parts or you need cool clothes or whatever, just go down and see our friends at God and Porsche, God and Classic of Las Vegas. They are where it's at. Okay, now we can get to last week's predictions and reconciling our poor predictions with what actually happened right right uh mental <laughs> bring up this damn quadra sherpa pro thingamadoo hickey this lawn ornament that jp picked the 2018 quadra sherp pro running at no reserve out of transfer pennsylvania uh showing 41 operating hours this is the amphibious you know post-apocalyptic um i don't want to get my feet wet when i go to the other side of the pond um look what i've got in the garage conversation piece because i still even as a utilitarian vehicle i still don't see the point there's no room in there for your wife and dog i don't even know if you could fit your golf clubs in there this thing is kind of a joke but it's also kind of cool um jp what is it uh mog fest up in the pacific Northwest? i think this would be this is about the only place I can think of on the planet where this would be the coolest thing to show up in would be MogFest up uh, up in Washington State or Oregon or somewhere, wherever they hold that thing every year. 63-inch um, inflatable low-pressure tires that also act as paddles when you do float this thing across a lake, pond. I couldn't imagine putting it across a river because I don't think the speed would keep up with any remote current. Um but uh, not a lot of room, but an uh, unbelievable amount of capability. The trouble is I just don't think these things are actually road legal. So, uh, you know, and those tires probably cost a fortune. You wouldn't want to run them on cement anyways. Uh, but there you go. The Quadra Sherp Pro. One had sold previously for $96,000. And I feel like that skewed our bids going right into this unknown area. So I started the bidding out at 85000 thinking this was a couple of years older and had a few more operating hours on it. So therefore, it would be less worth less than the $96,000 one that tripped in the summer of this year on the same platform on Bring a Trailer. JP came in at 110. You were the high bid man. Uh, Wade said 91,000, and uh, Mental said 97,000. JP, should we just jump into the uh, to the result, or do you want to ask uh, Rich well, yeah, I, what well, he thinks about this I, thing? I have two things to say. One, uh, has your lovely, beautiful wife been eating too much pasta at your restaurant in San Francisco? There's plenty of room for her. You said that there's no room for your wife and dog. I mean, come on. What the hell? Your wife is way small. I think there's no room for you and her and all three of your dogs and your daughter could all fit. You would be strapped to the roof. Rich, have you ever seen one of these things? What do you think of the Sherpa? That is very intriguing. I'm <laughs> raised in Louisiana. It looks like something I would... Yeah, I would right? Okay. And, it, and yeah. it floats. If you didn't catch that, you can actually drive that across the swamp. And yeah. I, yeah. I would have taken that to school. Right yeah. this would have been the perfect Water like boy. katrina oh, thing right <laughs> shout out it, to chris it, carbine it, who's in uh new in orleans. new orleans watching the show right now yeah rich what part of louisiana did you grow up in shreveport nice 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 yeah, yeah, very yeah. cool nice people you in shreveport because you weren't raised there that's what exactly <laughs> i'm gonna say yeah, nice good. nice nice too as if i have any idea what that place is yeah, like yeah. but uh okay uh -huh. great well it must right, have been rich, cool if you were there Rich, knowing that one of these sold for $96,000 a couple of months ago, the exact same vehicle, um, and uh, I guessed 85, JP guessed 110, uh, which is the you know low and high bids on this car, what would you think this car might have sold for just the other day on Bring a Trailer with you know basically break-in hours? It this, this really hasn't been run. I'm going to go $110,001. Hot damn, Ooh. he's going over Ooh. me. He yeah, knows Price is Right stole, rules. <laughs> price is right. He watched the yeah. opening of the show. All right. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So without further ado, the winner of this thing, the guy who's been on the show for all of eight minutes, Rich, <laughs> um, our car sold because it was no reserve for $150,000 on a solid 54 bids. That's a lot of action. And by Rich taking the over, JP, he beat you. <laughs> he did. I know. And I am I'm glad, right? That's I, the way I, to go. I, Coming in here and I, rolling in. I like him already. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Anthony, what's up, Herd? How you doing, buddy? How's Idaho? Are you hanging out with Randy Bloom? You guys got to have, you guys got to start like a viewing party. You got to find a bar and get a bunch of nerd herds together somewhere and watch it together. I, I, and I want to see that stream. That would be so rad. What's up, Kevin? How you doing, buddy? All right, let's get to the next car. Oh, wait, actually, before I say that, what do you guys think of the results of that Sherpa? Do you think that was a great deal? Do you think that was insane money? Do you think World War Three is coming? And that's why it went for so much money. I mean, the ask, news kind of makes it happen, right? Ask Mental the question because I feel like when we were trying to tee up the show last week, somebody in the studio was trying to look up the website for Sherp Quadra, whatever, to see what they go for new. They don't make a lot of them, and apparently you have to wait a long time to get one. Mental, did we ever get an MSRP on one of those damn things? No, no, we did. We went to the website, but we did not get an MSRP because they're coming out of the – uh, you know, one of the former Ukraine. invaded. Yeah, it's so yeah, you know yeah. their supply chain might be a little disrupted right now. Maybe, yeah. so maybe that's why that one went for all the money because it literally brought you know fifty four thousand dollars more than the other one uh, that was two years younger did uh, just seventy days ago. So that that to me seems like I, I mean I'm guessing that's a hundred fifty thousand dollar vehicle easy before they blew up the factory. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why that thing is going crazy. Maybe somebody found out that, um, you know, they're not going to be able to start building them even if the war ended tomorrow. So, you know. Well, uh, speaking of people doing stupid things, let's go ahead and move on to our good friends over at P Car Market. Wah, wah, wah. All right. All right. Here uh, we go. Here we the go. The Porsche 996 Turbo. Tell us all about that. This is the Wimbledon car that we found out um, was uh, brought into the U.S. or brought into, where was it? No, it's in Italy, and it was brought into Italy from Sweden or something. This was a um, a European press car that Porsche uh, basically fabricated this car in a stunning paint-to-sample Wimbledon green um, and then did a lot of um, accessories on the inside. So this car is high-touch, several options. I think, JP, we were marveling at like the two dozen or more than two dozen options on the uh, option sticker underneath the hood. But Picar Market is essentially trying to sell this car in the U.S., essentially, um, out of Rome, Italy, which is pretty difficult because this car is not old enough yet to qualify for the federal 25-year exemption on importing the car, um, making this car not impossible, but certainly difficult to get into most of the lower 48 states, um, certainly impossible for California, and it would be... Uh, you know, involved if you want to just say bring it into Nevada or Louisiana. But nonetheless, beautiful car with just uh, 91,000 miles, which was around $56,000. It's a ZZZ VIN, so it's always going to be considered a European car. I think that digital dash can be easily switched over from kilometers to miles per hour, um, which is arguably probably the biggest obstacle for getting the car in. Um, but um, you, you'll still have to pay a lot more to bring it through. With that being said, I don't think anybody in the studio thought this car would bring a retail number on the natural um, auction, namely because everybody knows this car will wind up in the deal tank. Um, so without further ado, just to recap our bids, um, I, again, was the – was I the high man on this one? You were. I, of course yeah, you were. I said, Come on. I said $58,000. Well, I actually gave it to you by accident, so I have to, I have to correct the document. Uh, I said $58,000. JP said $55,000. Um, Wade came in as the low man at $44,000. And Mental uh, was just above Wade at, at uh, $48,000. Now, the thing that I want to qualify here is that all of us agreed that what our bids contingent upon this thing and then failing to sell and obviously winding up in the deal tank. And I think we all assumed that it would wind up in a deal tank for over six figures. So without further ado, or um, let's give it to Rich real quick. Rich, special car in this color, if it was on a, a title of a state in the lower 48, this would be a $100,000 car easy. Without the fancy paint job or being a European press car, um, this would have been, you know, a sixty dollars to $75,000 car. But the car's in Rome, Italy, and it's difficult to bring into the United States. I was the high man at 58000 and uh, Wade was the low man at 44000 Where do you think the bidding stopped on this car, and do you think it's sold? I think it's old. And I you think do. that that number yep. was 62000 Okay. Would That's you ever consider purchasing a car from out of the country? I would. You would. Okay. Have you ever done that? I haven't. 
but I would. You wouldn't be scared of any kind of weird tariffs or any of the paperwork that any of that kind of stuff would get, come in? All right. Rich, t- he's a risk taker. He's yeah. ready to go. He's on I a like, first name I basis mean, the, with the governor. I mean, that is a <laughs> That's true. He'd be like, car. I know the governor. What are you going to do? You like the color? That's, uh, that, is a, that is a sexy car. That is a sexy yeah. car. He likes that's, that Wimbledon green, right? Yeah, you, are exactly. you a Porsche guy? I, I'm kind of a Porsche guy. I don't know a lot about them, mm-hmm. but I had a friend who just lost out on a bid on, uh, on the under trailer. Mm-hmm. Bring a trailer. Yeah, yep. On bring a trailer and uh, Porsche is, it's a beautiful car. Yeah. It's difficult for me yeah. to get in and out of. But well, the, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think you'd probably have a pretty easy time getting in and out of a 996 Turbo. They, yeah. They're they're surprisingly roomy. Uh, I myself have owned one, and I'm not the smallest guy. All right, Deep, what were the Rich, actual, what, the final retail price of the... So so Rich has been in the studio for like 15 minutes, and twice he's been the high bidder. I think we're going to have to nickname him Riverboat Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so, so without further ado, our car brought $55,996 where it failed to sell on just 13 bids, confirming for all of us that we were correct and right on the money. <coughs> and for the About record what, that I won. Which one of these is yeah, the yeah. wah, wah, wah and, button and, on this one, JP? And, I don't know. And, and, just start and, hitting them. And, and, What's amazing is that you didn't add 996 to your bid. You would have I had your know, second I Yahtzee. Saw it. I was like, oh, you would have had it. your second Yahtzee, you jackass. That's, I can't Five digit, you, you know? no less. Yeah, no kidding. Absolutely. And, um, but it confirmed not only did we guess, like, you and I are right on the money, right where we thought that thing was going to land, which is where it did. Yep. Um, we also said it would wind up in the deal tank for over 100 grand, which it did. It's in the deal tank right now, offered at $105,000. Um, so we definitely guessed that one correct. Um, I, yeah, look, you cannot, you cannot discredit um, peak our market for taking anybody that'll throw them money. They, they're in business to make money, and that's what they're doing. But this this car was dead on arrival. I don't think anybody thought it was going to happen. Um, you know, it, it's almost like these people that are selling cars on P car market out of Europe are kind of the same people who are listing their cars on eBay, knowing damn well their car is not going to sell in the auction, but it's just a way to bring it to market. At least it was before the proliferation of mass adoption of uh, bring a trailer and all the, the, the sites that we happily cover underneath them. Uh, but this is... I mean, this is just like pissing in the wind. I just don't see how that's going to happen. Even at $105,000, which I think is a fair value for the car, you're going to be in that car closer to one hundred thirty dollars by the time you title it and pay registration fees and all this other thing. You might be in it close to $140,000 on the ground in the United States with tariffs, shipping, insurance, um, registration, and taxes. like that. And that... That number doesn't make sense for this car. That's so assuming the, the the seller is reputable, and we just can't bet on that given P car market's reputation. One thing you may not know, Rich, is that if you are considering buying a car from an auction site, definitely watch some Bid Nerds episodes and watch the ones about P car market uh-huh. and buyer beware. Mental, what do you think of the results of this thing? Uh, we, we called it. Uh, I think if you were looking at something like this, maybe you've got a home or you do a business in Europe and then you buy it, you drive it over there and you sit on it mm. for a month or a couple of years and then you bring it in. Now that, that'd be an interesting take. If you're, if you're, uh, who's the big actor, uh, you know, Clooney. the big Clooney, Clooney, he has a place on Lake Como, right? This would look really good next to his black nine, six, four speedster. That car gives you a reason to buy a home in Italy. I think, see, Real estate guys got it all figured out. All right, what do you guys think of the results of that 996? Was that a missed opportunity? Is this car staying in Italy or is it going to find its way onto our shores? Let us know in the comments below. All right, what else did we make a bid on? All right, uh, mental tee up, please, for us the 1989 Porsche 911 Speedster on Bring a Trailer. Um, interesting car, and I covered this car for a couple of reasons. One, my partner, JP, I actually think a black-on-black-on-black on black on black Speedster is his iconic, perfect, end-all dream car. In fact, um, given the right amount of money, I think he would be buried in one as a coffin, um, you know, being put six feet under. So what we're looking at here is a high-mileage Speedster in Naples, Florida at the end of the summer season. And so this car does not have a ton of things going for it, um, and I wondered how well it would do. Um so, without further ado, 89,000 miles, Naples, Florida, uh, you know, in white, and it's late October. I mean, people are putting out pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns, and this guy's trying to get off his speedster, and I 
feel like he's bringing it to market too late. With that in mind, I still thought that this car, given the high mileage and the late season, that maybe this guy would be willing to wheel and deal, and $159,000 is a number I thought could possibly bring this car home, making it a pretty sweet deal, especially if you live in Las Vegas or Arizona or Southern California, where you could actually keep driving this car through the winter months. JP came in just over me covering my bid by saying $159,911. And then Wade wound up being the high man at $165,000, saying absolutely this car will stay in Florida where there is no season and, uh, and this car could be used year-round, which was a pretty decent argument. Um, and then Mental, Ever the Pragmatic one, said $149,000, $911,000. Um, and I can't remember the reasons why Mental was uh, a little more... So if, if, on there's this one. there's some car has there's miles. Some, there's some rust. Oh yeah. There's oh, some yeah, yeah. there's you some the, signs of neglect. Like some Florida stuff. Oh yeah, there was you no were rust. One of the screws yeah. had was and the exhaust. Yeah. There's I, just there's just I forgot. Some Florida the exhaust issues. was not rusty. It was I, one of the clamps, man. Come on, man. No, it was you too, in the seams. <laughs> would you two quit quit quarreling and let me get to my joke, which is that the reason why Mental was the low man is he actually judged the condition of the car by looking at the photo. Something you and I never do. <laughs> 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 All right, Rich. High mileage Florida Speedster. It's the end of the season. Most of the country is not buying cars like this. They're selling them, uh, and they already sold them. What do you think this car went for on the big the big platform? Bring a trailer. And Mintel's bid was one forty eight. One forty nine. One forty nine nine eleven. He was go getting cute. One forty seven. For me, the car looks heavily used. Right. I mean, I can picture him pulling into the valet with the young University of Florida girl, and I, I just can't see it. He's getting rid of it because he can no longer get that, you know, the miles out of it he wants. Man, I the like car can get the I, miles, I really like him. Yeah, yeah, I like him uh, so much. Uh, <laughs> Riverboat Rich coming in, and covering the, coming in and covering the low bid again. That is hot. Riverboat Rich. All right, without further ado, $130,000 is where the bidding stopped on this car. It failed to sell on 27 bids, meaning Riverboat Rich won two out of three from the experts in studio, proving once again that we don't know what the hell we're doing or talking about. Um, he's right. I mean, the car is heavily used. Mental pointed that out. Uh, the season is over. Uh, the mileage was high. And, uh, and on the biggest platform in the world, 130000 is where the bidding stopped on that car. JP, what do you make of that result? Or, I, I, I don't think anybody's surprised it didn't sell. But 130, they got off of that car early. What do you think is going on there? Is there something we missed, or you want to try and? No, I just think it was high miles. I think I think it's just we're right. I mean, I think it's just high miles and uh, not the perfect condition car, and the end of the season. I think it's all those things. Uh, I don't think this necessarily uh, is reflective of some kind of like massive crash in the uh, classic car market or anything like that. Like some people might speculate. I think it's going to be harder for anyone to sell any, uh, six figure or better classic car as we go into the winter, but that's just the case anyway, regardless of what's going on in the economy. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm surprised it didn't bring a little bit more, but it's not that crazy. I mean, I've, I, I don't know what the heck I didn't, what I was thinking bidding over you on that one. That was a dumb move because I've seen speedsters going for the buck 50 range uh, that had fewer miles. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I got bought in. I bought into the hype. Maybe it's just because you hyped me up and thought, got me thinking maybe I would buy it. It, it worked. It worked. Good job. Nice. Uh, nice for pushing me over. What do you mental, guys think? Mental, uh, what? Mental, mental, you won that one. What do you want to say about? Um, you oh, don't let like, mental talk. He won. Now he's going to rub it in. God damn it. Yeah. Oh, but it, just, just to it. say, I still would have bought it. I think it's well bought. I think whoever has it is going to have uh, it's, it's, I it, hope it's not, it didn't sell. Car. It didn't sell. Oh, I'm sorry. It's failed it failed to sell. sell. Yeah. Sorry, fair mm. sell. I, I thought that was a good price. I thought, yeah, I think we were all in the ballpark on this one. I think this is a better car than, uh, it, it looks, but you know, you've got your investment crowd that are backing away from it. And the, the, the enthusiasts aren't looking because it's out of season. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely not an investment car because it has to have a lot fewer miles and be in better condition. This is definitely the car for someone like us who would actually drive the darn thing. What do you guys think of the results of that speedster? Let us know in the comments below and let's get to the next car. All right, really quickly. We're just going to cover one more car on P car market. This was the 2012 Porsche 9, 991 Carrera S coupe with Incredible spec, uh, maybe not the best colorway, but it had the adaptive sports seats, it had ceramic brakes, it had the PDCC. Um, it's an S engine. 
Uh, super cool car, but this car had um, flood damage and a branded title, and we didn't catch that until we were reviewing it, hmm. and that really that really made everybody take pause and and really look at the car, going, "Oh, what the hell are they doing?" So we came in pretty low on this car. I said twenty nine thousand dollars. JP took the over at thirty two thousand nine nine one. Uh, Wade said forty one thousand dollars, grabbing the over on that, and then. Um, What's his name? Mental said twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> What's his name? You cut What's your hair name? and everyone Switch forgets your Gary. you, man. Switch your yeah. Barry. Yeah. Well, as soon as Mental gets here, we can start the show. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Rich branded title on a nine eleven on PCAR Market. What do you think is going to happen with this uh, with this car? I don't think it's going to get sold. And what funny. do you think the bid will go up to? 25,000. 25,000. Well, okay. So we can't, we got to give them, I think it was, no, that's a, that's a legit bid, right? It was over, it, it was bet. under that when we started. Okay. Yeah. I think it was like 15 when we made our bids, right? Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. This thing is just an absolute pile of crap. I can't even believe they brought this to market. What were the actual results, Michael Deeb? All right. So without further ado, the, the, the market got off of this car at $36,250, where it failed to sell on just 15 bids. Very similar in result to the uh, 996 Turbo. Um, Wade, I think, is a winner here at $41,000. He was only three grand away, just beating, narrowly beating JP, um, who was also about three grand away. So I have to do the math on that. But I think I, think won. I won. I'm in the, uh, in the, in the winner category is me. So I assume someone else did the math before the program. And I'm you gonna and I, le- I'm going to lean on that. You and I are the only two. Because <laughs> it's I'm, the only way I'm going to get another win here. I, You know, Rich came <laughs> in and wiped the floor with me. <laughs> the hell? The real estate guy is just so beating up all the car guys. 750 And from JP, it's... <laughs> uh, 3,000. Actually, JP, you did win. I was right the first time. Damn it. Yeah. I was trying to give it to Wade. Yeah. Well, he's not I here. I hate it when you win. Yeah, he's not here. He can't collect his trophy anyways. Well, I mean, this is, an, this is another award for P-Car Market for being the ishiest, crappiest, stupidest oh. uh, platform to sell your car on. It's just one piece of junk after the next, one waste of our time after the next. You know, the thing about the thing about P-Car Market, Rich, when you go on most of the other platforms, their ads are written very well usually. Mm-hmm. The There are people, bring a trailer when you sell your car and bring a trailer it's bring a trailer's job to go and write the ad and they they get into it they look at all the facts they confirm everything they make sure that the car is legit uh they check you know to make sure it's in your the, the seller's name and all that kind of stuff and peak our market just doesn't do any of that they just don't care they just like believe whatever the seller says they don't they just and it's just you go onto their site and you want to see cars that you might be interested in, but then their good cars are mixed in with stuff like this, and you can never really believe what you're reading. And you have to dig in. What happens is we find out after. I mean, with this particular car being a salvage title and being you know flooded and <laughs> yep. all that stuff, they should have led with that, and they yeah. didn't. It was buried in there. Yeah, in this in the bottom of the second paragraph, they said there's some water damage, and then you open up the Carfax and it says flood, yeah. and it was in like Hurricane Sandy, and you're like, oh my god, that's more than a little bit of water damage. So yeah, um, we all suspected this car would fail to sell and wind up in the deal tank, and that's exactly what happened. While it made thirty six thousand two hundred fifty dollars in the natural auction, it sits in the deal tank today, offered at sixty five thousand sixty five thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and I would just remarking on that asking price, it's never going to happen. <laughs> never going to yeah. happen. You can get this a car, clean one for, for this, this. I can't this believe car. somebody wanted to pay 36 for this thing. <laughs> All, right. All right. I am yeah. the most bottom feeder of anyone any of you people know. <laughs> and I yeah. was, what, what did I do? 25, I think, was what I was, it was No, it was at 19. Yeah, it was No, like, but what did, I, no. what did I say I would go to? Yeah, yeah. 25. Yeah, you you 25. said up to 25. Yeah, you know what? As a bottom feeder mental, I think you should be switch or catfish. Like that's what you're doing there. <laughs> More of a flounder. Oh, oh first I lobster, then I flounder. I went there, yeah. A little bottom fish. All right, there you go. What do you guys think of the Chum Bucket car? Uh, this thing is going to be sitting there for a long time, if you ask the nerds. I, it'll, no one's ever going to buy this car. I hope the guy likes it because he's keeping it. All right, let's take a quick break and come back with four new predictions right after this. 
Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, God and Porsche of Las Vegas. If you don't subscribe to Bid Nerds on YouTube right now, I'm going to shoot this 997. If you said, wait, that's a 996, you're a nerd. So subscribe to the new YouTube channel, Bid Nerds. Get those nerds! All right, welcome back, guys. Definitely check out our good friends over at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being part of the nerd herd. Hit that subscribe, like, and notification button if you haven't done it already. I'm guessing that if you're this deep into the show, you probably have hit one of those darn buttons. But do it again, just for fun. All right, let's get to... Some big time new predictions. I am pretty stoked about the cars that we have on the list here tonight. Uh, let's get after it. All right, JP. Uh, Mental, will you bring up the 1989 Ferrari Mondial T Cabriolet that is on cars and bids, showing just 23,500 miles and offered out of San Diego, California. Uh, this is being sold by a private party. Um, very interesting in that. In this era, I am telling you, without knowing any numbers, I can almost guarantee you that 90% of the cars that Ferrari made were, were came out of the factory in Rosso Corsa. So to see a bright yellow Mondial Cabriolet from the 1980s is a pretty rare sight. Now, again, in the 60s and 70s, they made some yellow cars, and definitely in the 90s, they made a lot of yellow cars. Um, but in this era, uh, finding a yellow Mondial is a pretty rare thing indeed. Uh, the T is the last of the three different generations of the Mondial platform. Um, essentially, they moved to the motor from the 348. It's a 3.4 liter V8. Um, this is a, uh, what do they call that, uh, flat plane crank uh, mental. Explain that is to everybody, yeah, that's it. <laughs> expl mental, explain to everybody in 20 seconds why a flat plane crank makes a V8 motor rev faster and sound so beautiful at high RPMs. What, how does it work? Because you don't need to account for all directions. You only have to have the uh, cylinders opposing each other, which is why the new Corvette does it. And yes, and this most super bikes. And yes, it does sound incredible. They sound incredible. So this is, this is really when the Ferrari motors really came on the song. This is a car that rev to well over 7,000 RPM, probably very close to 8,000 RPM. Uh, without knowing exactly, I just kind of sort of know my Ferraris. This is a car that made 300 horsepower uh, and 238 pound-foot of torque. So it really did have enough um, horsepower to get out of its own way. This was a car that offered some some actual performance, where earlier Mondials were pretty to look at, but they they kind of didn't um, fulfill the promise of looking like an exotic car. They, they really weren't very quick. But this car was pretty quick. Um, and the other thing that they did, uh, the V8s that came before these cars, the V8 was min um, mounted midship. So it was behind the driver, but in front of the rear wheels. But the motors were transverse. In the T, they turned the motors to go longitudinally. Um, and, it, you know, Ferrari had to do a little bit of engineering to do that packaging. But the cars, I think, handled a little bit better. I think they could get the motor to sit a little bit lower. I think the cooling was even on both banks of the cylinder. And, and so... From a technical standpoint, this was a far superior car, even though it looked almost identical to the car that came just before it. The best of the breed, the Mondial T Cabriolet. Uh, this car looks to be in really nice condition. Um, used car, not it's not a lawn queen, it's not a show car, it's not a 100-point car that you're going to go win a Concours with. Um, but these uh, cars tend to be one of the best bang for the bucks in the you know sort of Radwood-era Ferrari line. Testarossas have gone back over $120,000, $150,000. The really low mileage ones are closer to two hundred grand. Um, we see uh, Berlinetta versions of the 348 bringing over $100,000. 328s bringing like $150,000. But Mondials are really kind of the, the affordable Ferrari, and they share so many um, components with the 308 line and the 328 line, and in this case, the 348 line. So a very neat car in an unusual color with decent low miles decent condition out of Southern California and it's on cars and bids, which is now really starting to, I don't want to say flex its muscle, but we are starting to see slightly more exotic sports cars regularly on the platform and with good success. So JP, here's another opportunity to see if Doug DeMiro can sell a weird car. I would not bet against him on this one. 
Take it away, JP. Why would you like this car and why would you maybe stay away from it? Well, Zach Miller is in the chat uh, from Cars and Bids. He says he loves the yellow. Of course you do, Zach. What is it? Are you going out and like peeking into people's garages and finding yellow Ferraris? Because this is like, how many of these yellow Ferraris can you guys find? This is amazing. Uh, Doug did do a video about this car. It's already got, I think, two and a half, 250,000 views on it. So that's always going to bring more eyeballs equal money, I think, when it comes to final results. Chris Harris loves hey. his Mondial. Yeah, time uh, out, time and, out, time yeah, out. Yeah. I want to ask Zach a question. Oh. Zach, at the top of the listing where it says 1989 Ferrari Mondial T Cabriolet, correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, in the in the comments, but don't you normally put Doug DeMiro reviewed when he does a review video up there in the, in the heading? Because I didn't catch the Doug DeMiro video until I just scrolled down here now, and I was wondering why I missed it, so I just thought you could set it straight. Don't you normally do that? And if you do, how come you didn't do it on this one, or did you change the policy, or am I just wrong? Thank you. Go ahead, JP. Thanks. There for it is. Yeah, thanks for hopping in there. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. Chris Harris has one of these, and he absolutely loves it. I've driven a handful of them over the years, and every time I've driven one of these, I just love this car. I love having the back seats. I, it, it's not as exciting as some of the other Ferraris out there, but this is just the weird science car, man. I want this thing. Rich, what do you think of the Ferrari Mondial or Mondial or however the hell you pronounce it? Mondiale. It takes, it takes me back. It reminds me of Magnum PI. Magnum okay. PI, all right. Makes me think of the five inch inseam shorts that I currently <laughs> wear. Yeah. You are. <laughs> I, I like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, it's a good thing we don't have a camera underneath the table because he is wearing five inch shorts. Surprise, it's true. surprise. <laughs> that, uh, the car looks incredible and it's extremely sexy. You can tell it's been very well maintained. Um, I would see myself driving that car. I could see you driving this yeah. thing. You'd look good. Yeah. You'd look good rolling down the uh, Las Vegas Boulevard with your and best River girl Boat. or girls or River whatever. Boat. Or Riverboat. The thing about a Mondial T is you could have a cigar in your mouth the entire time oh, you're in yeah. the car. Always. I love that, that guy. Is, yeah. He, yeah. Your car. he just <laughs> got your yeah. number right there. Michael D figured it out. Okay. I'm, you would I'm see sorry. me at all the coffee shops. Yeah. The local nice restaurant valets. <laughs> Any place where you could pull up in front of the restaurant and they can see you inside, Correct. which is hard to find in Vegas. Correct. That is yeah. one thing that drives me absolutely nuts. Um, Riverboat buys this car. He's getting the Nevada vanity plate that says humidor. <laughs> no, I'm going to keep gorgeous one. <laughs> I'm going to look for that same plate. Gorgeous. Mental, what do you think of this thing? So, uh, in addition to all the great technical specs that uh, Deep talked about on this car, this was actually also, you can afford these, and it was one of the last ferraris that you could do the work on because when they mounted the engine longitudinal you could actually do the engine out service if you have a lift or if you're completely you know very very brave you can still pull that entire carriage out remove the fuel injection do the valve adjustments which you have to do like every three to four thousand miles uh so if you are mechanically inclined this is really the car to have i think it is actually a little bit better than the 348 even though it's a little bit slower and it is probably the last of really the pre-nsx reliability era that yeah. Ferrari had. These were just great, wonderful, nutso cars. And it, for the longest time, was the only four seat cabriolet that they had made for generations. Deeb, yeah. what's going to happen yeah. with the results on this car? Yeah, I like what Mental was saying. It, it, it is the same spec as the 348, but the car has a longer wheelbase and it's a little bit heavier. So it's, it's more of a grand touring car, which the 348 is more of a, you know, back road or track car. Um, but, but wonderful sounds and a, and a super driving experience. Um, our car is doing really well. So it closes tomorrow, JP, on cars and bids out of San Diego, California. Again, with just 23,500 miles. And what I say to the nerd herd and anybody else out there that's listening, go find me another yellow Mondial T, Cabriolet or Coupe. I'm telling you, for the if you look for this car for another year or two, you won't see another one in yellow. And with low miles and decent condition, this looks like it's a pretty good car. Um Recent service history, uh, Carfax reports some repairs and maintenance. Timing belt was done in 2017. So it needs a belt, JP, but I, it's amazing. I don't think that's holding this car back. With just one day to go, our car is sitting at $60,000 on 14 bids. That service is probably ten grand uh, to get the belt done uh, because, as Mental was saying, you got to undo that subframe and drop the motor. Um, 
if the belt were done, I would say this car could be staring at eighty thousand dollars. But since the belt is not done, and I think that's relevant here, I'm going to go and say seventy thousand dollars will bring this car home. I'm going to go seventy grand to you, JP. Where are you at? Who boy, it's tough because you know. <sighs> Cars and bids, uh, as well as they've been doing lately, they still have this kind of, it's the one platform that doesn't get late stage bids. So it's hard to look at this and go, okay, this might be it. I mean, it's entirely possible. It doesn't get another bid tomorrow, but I'm going to bet on this one. I'm going to go over, I'm going to say 75 and uh, hope this car brings all the money because I think it really is a great car and it is special. And yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a yellow Mondial. What do you think there, Rich? Well, with my deep car knowledge, <laughs> <laughs> what I'm currently thinking about. And that shorts <laughs> that aren't as deep. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, he's yeah. adjusting. Um, I'm Did he say, say deep carnage or deep car knowledge? Because I couldn't understand the words. <laughs> Michael from the dungeon, putting it in his two cents. <laughs> with, my, with my bid, I'm going to say 65000 Sixty-five thousand, oh, and, and right now it's currently at sixty. Okay, all right. That's a good bid. That's a yeah. good bid. That's strong. Yeah. Mental, where you at? I'm gonna have to say, uh, cars and bids has demonstrated repeatedly, especially just since we've been doing this, that they can move these kind of cars. So I'm gonna say, just I'm gonna be wrong, but I'm gonna be close, and I'm gonna say eighty-one three fifty. Wow. Going big. Whoa, Love cool. it. Going over. Uh, well, we certainly wish the seller luck and uh, Doug DeMero luck as well. Zach, when are you going to get me or my Parker, my Parker, my partner, Michael Deeb on Doug DeMero's show? He's kind of like, kind of, have you noticed that? He's doing a, an auction review kind of thing. He's been reviewing some live auctions. I think, I think you guys need some bid nerds <laughs> on Doug DeMiro's show to help get that thing popping. You know, you know, Let's you do know, a collab, Joe, man. It's, it's, almost, it it's, it's almost time like, out, time. <laughs> I'll say it's like Zach. we had this major car show coming yeah. up in a week that Doug could come here for. Oh, whoa, yeah. That's SEMA. not bad. SEMA, yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's a, if, that's an uh, option. I just want to I just want to drop this and and like get Zach out of this uncomfortable situation and just say if Doug Demiro's ever watched a show, he's never going to have us on. <laughs> <laughs> and if he is, it's not going to be me. It's, it's going to be Rich. There's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, it's like Rich, be the guy with the short yeah. shorter than mine. <laughs> yeah, Rich Zach, is totally going to be on Zach, the show. Zach's going to write you and me an email. He's going to be like, guys, I'm really sorry. I talked to Doug about it. Um, and it's just not going to happen. By the way, do you have Wade's number? We'd really like to talk to him. <laughs> also, here's a uh, here's a cease and desist order. We, uh, <laughs> right. All right, guys. Plug in your bid in the comments below. Let us know what you think this uh, beautiful little Ferrari Mondial will bring. And let's move on to the next car. Michael D., what do we got? Hey, just mental. Was anybody putting bids on the Mondial? Absolutely, Kevin. Chime? Kevin's yeah. telling us uh, seventy-three right here. Lucas oh, chimed that's a high in number. at seventy-six. Mm. So uh, yeah, and oh, actually, all the 70s. What's, what's interesting is we did get a little bit of hate earlier in there. We've got uh, unfortunately our good friend Chris Carbine here, and I got to scroll up to find that he is a cabriophobe. Yeah, not yeah. cool, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, Anthony is saying that he doesn't like these cars at all, and you should buy a three hundred eight. But we oh did get to, we got a lot of yeah. action on this one, and and we always we, even if we don't agree with the nerd herd, we love their comments. Chris, two thousand twenty three, yeah. stop being a cabriophobe. All right, let's move on to the next car. All right, JP, I picked this car for uh, for you and I, although it turns out Mental is going to have a love affair with this. This is a 1974 Saab 99 EMS uh, that looks to be in spectacular restored condition. Uh, this car is offered out of Brooklyn, New York by the sellers. I can't say that name, Zercher. It sounds like a town in Switzerland. Um, it's showing 19,000 miles, but this car has been, um, uh, I shouldn't say restored. I think this car was kept in really excellent condition and owned by like the guy who ran like the Saab club for 99s or whatever. And it has won awards and it has been used regularly. It's got a lot of miles on it, um, but it has just been kept up and looked after for a very long time to be in, in super condition. Um, the car was reportedly purchased new through Saab's European delivery program in Sweden. 
and then uh, remained with the first owner in Pennsylvania until it was acquired by the seller in 2017. So imagine it's a two owner car um, and it's just fantastic. So four cylinder, it's got a couple of tasteful upgrades. There's some headers on it and a little bit of an exhaust system. They started the car in one of the videos and it, well, it doesn't sound like a race car. It sounds good. I mean, this is a, a neat little car. Uh, two liter inline Ford, naturally aspirated. It's fuel injected. Um, I think it's only a four speed, uh, which is interesting. I actually thought these were all five speed. So I was surprised to read specification that was just a four seed. Um, those Panasport wheels, mental, were a Saab Sport option. And they're literally embossed and say Saab on them, which is really cool. Uh, they're made by Renault, but they're meant to look like the uh, mini lights. And look at that Baltimore sticker. Go back one photo, um, uh, mental, please. When the car was brought in a container from the European delivery program, it didn't come over on a boat with all the other cars. It was special delivered to the guy who bought the car after he used it in Europe. And the Baltimore sticker is because it came in through the port to Baltimore. Uh, and so the guy left it on the windshield and has been there since the car was new in 1974. So just a lot of really cool nostalgic things. It looks outstanding in the bright orange. I love the original shape. Just a cool car out all around. Really neat interior. Very 70s in style and execution. Um, and I just dig it. I just thought it was too cool not for us to take a minute and just sort of stroll down memory lane. Um, so JP, I, I know you like these cars. I know you're high on them. Um, tell me what you like about this one as you're looking through the photos and, and kind of drinking it all in. I'd be shocked if you, you were going to take issue with this car in any way. But uh, let it have it. Let me see what you think. What, uh, give it to us. Well, my good friend Cord Shiflet in, uh, in Texas, also a real estate guy. Maybe you know him, Rich. Uh, he annually runs an event called the Fool's Roll where uh, you, where people, uh, it's an event, it's a race from Austin, Texas to Las Vegas. And uh, the contestants have to buy a car for $2,000 or less. And they have to, the fastest time to Vegas doesn't necessarily win. Not only do you have to get to Vegas the, with the fastest time, uh, you then, when you get to Vegas, you have to sell the car. And then you have to take all the proceeds and put it on one spin of the wheel on roulette. And, <laughs> uh, and then you're eligible uh, to win the prize if you were the actual fastest time. So if you don't sell the car or don't uh, do the roulette wheel thing, uh, then you're not eligible. So And they don't tell anyone what their times are until their award ceremony. The thing is, sobs are so reliable... And so cheap, or at least used to be back when cars, when you could still buy cars for $2,000 or less, um, the winning teams would buy sobs and yeah. diapers. Do the math. Uh, you know, the teams, the, the biggest problem was, though, that when, when the team would buy uh, a sob and some diapers so that they wouldn't have to stop for restroom breaks, um, there was usually an argument over, because, you know, it's usually a couple of guys doing this whole thing, and they're like, well, you know, how are you going to split the proceeds if you win? And then the one guy's like, well, even Stevens. And the other driver's like, well, wait a minute, I, I paid for the diapers. Don't I get reimbursed for those? <laughs> What the hell? So, yeah, I, uh, that's my th take on the sob. What do you think, Rich? <laughs> well, I, I'm Quite a story. About diapers. Uh, I'm thinking about what, uh, oh, what I would bet God, on. We're going to get an E I, on this episode between the shorts and the diapers. You're going back yeah. to the shorts, aren't you? <laughs> now that the man yeah, Everybody, everybody is loves the, short, the shorts play, man. The shorts play. <laughs> Extremely sexy car. Yeah. Uh, the, right? The orange is classic. It, to yeah. me, screams. Um, who's that? show chevy chase you know the the paneled wagon yeah oh uh, vacation vacation. Yeah. Vacation, yeah. vacation yeah that's what it screams to me and uh, it's priceless right uh, <laughs> I, I just saw a great comment i'm i am also sobbing right now oh very clever very clever it's a sob story what do you think mental <laughs> I love this car. I got all excited when we were doing this beforehand. Uh, there is an entire Facebook group called Pan, Pan Sports Make Everything Better. This car belongs in there. The, I would daily drive this all day. The actual 99s were only four speeds. The uh, 900s 
or five speeds. This is a fantastic car. It's actually a tilted four that sits on top of its own transaxle. So if you live someplace where they're so popular up in the Northeast, because they have wonderful traction, this is obviously a loved car with a wonderful history. I hope it goes to a great home. This thing is just so fantastic. Look at that interior. He is so sweet. Look and at I, that. I hope the car goes to a great home. Man, Love that. Man, I think it's Endearing. the haircut. I think it's the haircut. Okay, so what's going to happen with the results of this car? Michael D, first bid, what do you got? All right, JP. So <laughs> I, there are literally no comps out there on Classic.com or Bring a Trailer's uh, illustrious history to validate the value that the car is already sitting at. Closing tomorrow, and again, you know, 19,000 miles, true mileage unknown, in exceptional condition, um, enthusiastically owned, and incredibly well-maintained. This rare, especially more rare in this condition, 1974 Saab 99 EMS is already at $31,275. JP, I, I mean, it's going to continue to go up. It's it's already on uh, 15 bids. Ah, oh, man, I would just think that, like, you're never going to find another one that's as nice as this I, I, I without having to restore it yourself. Um, I, I just, I mean, it's bonkers, but I'm just going to say $40,000 because I think I think it's going to do that well. So I'm going to go forty grand. I have nothing to base that number on. I'm just trying to read the tea leaves. And um, 15 bids is not a lot of action, but I, I also feel like a car this special, the real bidders are waiting to the last minute. It wouldn't surprise me if this car goes for 45 or 50, um, but the economy is not real great, and the Saab is still kind of a niche market. The car might have broad appeal, but not at those numbers. I think there's only going to be a few people left in the room, and so I think 40 grand is probably enough to get it done. JP, 40,000 to you. I mean, $40,000 would only represent, what, another 25% increase from where it is less than 24 hours away. Usually on the last day, we see uh, it's not uncommon for numbers to go twice as high. I don't think this right. is going to get to 60, uh, but I will go high. I'm going to say 49,900, and that goes to you, Shorts Guy Rich. What do you got? Riverboat. It's well, tough, right? The pressure's on. With You're feeling pressure, it. I, I'm yeah. feeling it. I, I, <laughs> 49. 49. 900 is what I said. So you're going 49? Is that, no, is no, it, no, 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 no. You're, no, you're, no. you're mulling it around. I'm going $50,996. 996 All right. Wow. Okay. That would be one hell of a Yahtzee if he gets that one. Uh, mental, it's to you. I... I remember when these things were friggin' nine hundred dollars, and I also want to give a shout out to uh, uh, my my buddy Casey who joined in here. He has done that Texas rally you were just talking about. Came up here in a limo on this one. Oh, nice. So um, I don't know. They're they're the saw you on this. You can't restore this car because they don't make these parts. There's no Moss Motors for Saab ninety nines. So this is probably you know one of ten in the world. It's probably the nicest ninety nine in existence. So I'm gonna say fifty one. Zero nine nine. Jeez, wow. We're all kind of in that 50 range, give or take a couple of grand, except for Michael Deeb out on a limb. What do you guys think this little sob will bring when its auction closes tomorrow? Is it going to be a sob story or is it going to bring all the money? Let us know in the comments below and let's move on to the next car. How you feeling, Rich? Empowered. This is this is quite the game show, right? Well, I, I I think it's the fact that you guys allowed me to wear the shorts under my dress shirt this it's, evening. Yeah, we've got a fan going on under the chair. I can see you're kind of we, like that's the only reason. Rich, he said, yeah, all right. Rich, we Rich, we didn't allow it. You just didn't ask permission. So <laughs> correct. That's the best way. It's, he brought his own fan for under the desk. I don't. I was like, what is that for? Uh, he had those Velcro oh, stripper yeah. pants too. He just walked in. And it was like, whoosh, boom, yeah, bam, revealed. All right, next car. What do we got? Uh, what do we have? We have one of those uh, things. Dead air, um, dead air. Mental, mental. Would you bring up the 2017 Mercedes-Benz G550 4x4 squared? Yeah. Out of, what a out garbage of, heap. Out of Bloomfield Township of Michigan, our car is showing just 4,900 miles. Um, I don't really know a lot about these cars. I know uh, Rami had one until it almost burned him to death. Um, twin turbocharged four liter V8, 
I don't know what kind of horsepower these make. It's not a G63, but um, JP, Mercedes doesn't actually make this thing, right? Does, don't you have to buy a G-Wagon and then send it off to get the wide body no, kit put on? No, no, negative. Now, the, G, the G-Square the is a uh, factory rig. It is built on the 550 platform, so it is not the G63. Um, right. Rami would tell you they're underpowered. I never really had that problem. They are. They're massively underpowered. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, that's kind of patently ridiculous compared to the 63 yes um but they are a ton of fun to drive and it kind of feels like when you're driving one of these it feels like you're driving a mat truck because you're just so high off the ground and everyone gets the heck out of your way it does seem ridiculous that they didn't build this on the g63 though i mean uh, to say it's underpowered yeah. is just literally stupid uh but to say it's it, it, it could use some more power or would benefit from the g63 is absolutely true. The portal axles definitely do their job. This thing is formidable off-road. Taking this out in a dry lake bed or a, you know out in the sand and the dunes is an absolute kick in the pants. This is the first generation G uh, G squared, and these things are just so much fun. But uh, reliability, hmm. I only know of one that has burned to the ground completely. And out of I don't know how many of these that were made, not very many. That's not good odds. Uh, sure. Rich, is this John, a car? Yeah, what? What? You're gonna hop in? What? Did Rami buy his new? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the both of them. So uh, he's had what? Uh, four of them, I believe, if I remember. Uh, I what, he had six. Six, what, or six what's total the, G what's wagons. The, what's the MSRP on one of these things? Um, at the time, it was around two hundred. I want to say. Um, and is there a waiting list to get them? I imagine it's like a it's like an order only vehicle. Nobody stocks these things. Well, no. Mer I mean, Mercedes Benz here had one. It was two fifty. All right. So the the when they came out um, back in what year is this? This is a 2017, right? I mean, it wasn't <laughs> quite. It, they weren't in that. It, Mercedes wasn't doing that whole thing where you got to pay a whole bunch of extra. I mean, they weren't really in super high demand. I don't think they, I mean, they did well, but they didn't make a ish ton of these. Um, they consequently, because they only made them for a year or two mental. Is that right? Maybe one year, two that, years. That feels correct. Yeah. Um, you know, by the time 2019 came around in 2020, they just started going nuts. Uh, that's when people realized, Oh, okay, this is something special da, 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 And they kind of caught on. That's when all the Safari builds and the nine 11 started happening. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing about one of these though, if you live in Las Vegas or you live in a city, if you live in a condo, um, you better make sure it fits in the parking garage because it won't in most, uh, if you want to go and hang out at the, uh, the casino, you're going to have to park in valet because you're not going to be able to get in a parking garage and you're gonna have to pay that valet extra. But rich, I could see you in one of these. These are baller, man. And I think the, the, the real estate guy that wants to, to pimp, this seems like the rig for them. What do you think? I've seen quite a few real estate guys with these. For me, with a, with a G squared or just a G wagon, just a G wagon, yeah. right? Right. I'm just not. Um, I would go Range Defender before the G wagon. Really, really. Yeah, yeah. Personally, my wife's favorite car. Yeah. Right. So it's uh, it's it's a beautiful car. I think it's um, it's just not for. Yeah. You know, they don't have a whole lot of room. They look huge. Yeah. Uh, but in this generation, uh, the G-Wagons, they're really actually pretty damn small. The new ones that just came out, uh, those are much, much bigger, and those are more like a big old minivan that's square. Um, so uh, Mental, Rami had the white one that burned to the ground. Then he got a silver one. Then he got, uh, let's see here, he got another gray one. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm just talking G squared, not didn't he have G a yellow wagons. one for a while, like a highlighter yellow color? No, he had the bright green, but that wasn't a square. The, the yellow, the yellow is his D90, the die 90. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the uh, yeah, he never, he only had yeah. So he had this the black, this the white one, the silver one, and then a gray one, and then of course the red one, the current version that took an ish on him. The new ones suck. Um, they do not warranty them off road. What the f? are you talking about that's what it's for though right it's got portal axles it's supposed to be this big crazy thing but yeah they only warranty them if you're using it in the mall parking lot all right mental here you go go ahead tell me why this thing okay so this is where i finally get to poop on a car mm -hmm. now these <laughs> jp is correct this is you know it does dig into its heritage as a military designed vehicle and those axles are phenomenal but those are not off-road tires. Those are friggin' Pirelli Scorpions. Whatever, like that's not the easiest thing in the 
world to replace. That, so that's what? my point is this was not meant to go off road. Now a regular G wagon is a formidable creation and it can be fast in the street. It can be fast on there. This thing sits so tall. It, waves while you're driving it just the 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 sheer leverage that is placed on the very well designed suspension it's trying to do everything at once and it does it all terribly the four liter twin turbo is a fantastic engine but it does not make the sufficient horsepower for to move this much metal you want a g-wagon just go get the g63 this this if you want to be absolute totally pretentious with the super gold-plated uh, who blow watch and absolutely <laughs> in its conspicuous consumption taken to the absolute nth degree. What a giant frigging waste of money says the guy who's never driven one off road. Okay. Ah, what do we I think this know. car will go for Michael D dry? All right. So I, count I really, I really don't know anything about these cars. I can't believe that this would sell for more than it costs when it was brand new. Um, but with such low miles and the fact that the new ones aren't the same as the old one, uh, maybe there's some value there. Uh, so it's our car closes tomorrow. It's got just 4,900 miles. It's a 2017 factory G squared, <clears throat> and it's already sitting at $155,000 on a whopping 14 bids. Not a lot of bids. It's a three owner car, um, but I just don't think that it's done at 155. So without knowing much, which is typical. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go $185,000. Yeah. I mean, these things have kind of bopped up and down in price. Uh, the new G wagon came out and, uh, they were touting all the great specs for that. Um, but they really suck. And I think a lot of people that are seriously want the off-road rig and yeah, I mean, mental, of course you're going to change the tires. I've never seen one with street tires like this one, but that's fine. It only has 4,900 miles on it. Um, you get this thing, you immediately change out the wheels and tires, uh, and you go ripping around in the mud. I mean, you've got, look, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to go 205 because uh, that's what they've been going for. It's give or take uh, $20,000. I'd be more worried about this one burning down than anything uh, than being underpowered. Um, Rich, what do you think? Oh, I'm thinking it's going to be about 200 Heated seats know. in that. So those shorts, the, it doesn't matter. You can wear those short shorts all year long. I like it. Yeah, yeah. See, it. right? There you go. And your wife likes it, so... <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be around 207. 207? Good yeah. bid. Good bid. Mental, where are you at? So uh, it is going to sell, and I'm going to actually be the high guy here, and I'm going to say two and a quarter, because. Uh, but I do want to underscore, this thing's got 49,000 miles, you said? 4,900 4, miles. 4,900 miles, yeah. three owners. No one is buying this car because it's an effective off-road vehicle. They are buying it to be pretentious, and someone else will buy it to be pretentious. Two hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, I mean that just sounds like sour grapes. I mean, it's like no, it's not one, sour grapes. You're, you're I right. Don't, I don't think it's you're a lot right, of but it's totally capable. Yeah. A lot of truth. Yeah, right. Look, to, yeah. to back up Mental's bid, crypto is surging, and the guy who's buying this car is going to brag about that too. <laughs> I, I agree <laughs> that this is a pretentious rig, and the person that <laughs> the most likely person to buy it will be the person that doesn't use it for its capability, but that has nothing to do with the fact that this car can do the things that, uh, that, uh, we all hope it can I, do. I have, I have a better one for you. I currently have listed right now a 2016 G 63 with 14,000 original miles, mm. um, in a bright yellow pearl yeah. factory paint job. Uh, but it's the 63 and I drove the car to go do photos and it is, it's spectacular. I've never driven a G wagon before. Um, and with the 63 motor, it gets out of its own way. Um, and that car is currently live on Haggerty Marketplace. It's going to run for about two weeks. Um, so we won't cover it anytime soon, but we will cover it before it closes, probably a week from Sunday. Uh, so that car will come up, and we will definitely look at that car before it finishes on Haggerty Marketplace. And if you're interested, jump over to Haggerty uh, and throw a bid at it. You never know. You might win it and bring it home. Yeah, and if you're looking All to right. sell your own car, talk to uh, my partner, Michael Deeb, there. He can help you list your car on Haggerty Marketplace. Haggerty Marketplace does not sponsor the show. They should, and they hopefully will soon. But as of right now, they don't. But that doesn't mean Michael Deeb can't help you list your car. All right, last car. What do we got? All right, JP, you picked this car. This is a 2015 Porsche 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet. Um, this would be the third car like this that we have covered, a 991.1 uh, with a normally aspirated flat six. Our car has 77,000 miles, which is a few. 
and it's in Scottsdale, Arizona, where a car like this can be used year round. Um, interestingly, my partner picked a car with an automatic transmission, which is a head scratcher. I'm not sure why he parked uh, car covered par picked this car, but it does have a PDK, a seven speed PDK. Um, fabulous motor that makes 430 horsepower and 325 pounds foot of torque. Um, adaptive sports seats, PASM sports suspension, sport exhaust, all part of the GTS package. Silver with a red interior. Not my favorite colorway. The, I think the red in this car is too bright. In the, in the 70s and 80s, Porsche had a red leather called Can Can Red. And this red leather, they call it Garnet. But when I look at it, it looks to me like Can Can Red. It's too bright. I would like this car if it was more of like an ox blood or like almost a burgundy color. I think it would look really dope. Um, but the silver with the bright red, just I kind of pass and wait for a different one. I, I would not be a player for this car, even though it is a fantastic driving car. And these late model 911 Cabriolets are so friggin' rigid. It would feel like if you're a true sports car guy, you would not feel like you were giving up even a 2% structural rigidity or lack of integrity in any way. These cars are fabulous. The entire car feels like it's chiseled out of one piece of metal. Um, and with the high sill lines, the the door line now in today's car is not like at your, you know, your bicep length. This thing feels like it comes up to your chin. So it feels like you're really sitting in the car and just like the top, almost like like it almost feels like a Targa when you're driving it. They're fantastic. You can have a conversation in the car. You can talk on the phone in the car. Um, you could drive the snot out of it. Uh, this car is not going to roll over, and if it did, it will protect you. I don't feel like you're sacrificing anything when you own such a young Cabriolet from Porsche. This is an amazing car, and if it were in a different colorway and had a better gearbox, I would be all over it. But um, this one kind of missed me with the colorway, and the PDK just wouldn't be my first choice. So there it is. That's it in a nutshell. I'm, maybe there's something I missed, but uh, I'm really curious to know why JP picked this particular car. So, John, um, end of the season, another Cabriolet at Halloween. I, I feel like the people that are getting off these their cars this late in the game are leaving money on the table. Is that what you think is going to happen here? And was there something about this car that made you choose it that I missed? Well, I'm just wondering if you watched the show. I mean, have you ever seen this? Or was this the episode that where you were doing it from the toilet or something like that? Because, look, we had a GTS 991.1 on Cars and Bids just a week or two ago. Uh, that was a coupe, and that was in a crazy color, and that was a manual. And what did we? And the results of that car were unbelievable. They were out. Yeah. I mean, this car, Rich, we all thought it was going to be maybe a buck twenty, buck thirty, which is about the same amount that GT3s of the same era are mm -hmm. going for. But this particular car brought $160,000. And what did they say on our show that you apparently don't watch? Michael Deeb, you just wait. We're going to see GTSs coming out of the woodwork and people are going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, I've got a GTS too, so I'm going to get $160,000. We don't always pick cars that, that just because we like them, we pick cars because they are the most interesting car, right? So this particular car, um, I being a Cabrio guy, being someone who loves convertibles, I hate this car. Um, it's because of that transmission. The colorway doesn't bother me too much. I mean, I'm not a big fan of the red, at least it's off said offset by uh by the black but this car is like almost literally the polar opposite of the other one that we covered while still being the same car technically um yes it will drive great but it's just do we think this car is going to bring anywhere even close to what that purple one is of course not uh but before we get to uh, bids what do you think of this car rich the red is absolutely stunning. He's loving the red. He's loving the red, guys. The deep All right. blood lobster. Uh, you know, it just it, it it speaks to me. Yeah, I could see that door opening up at Harlow here in Vegas, and people <laughs> just peeking in to see that red come out. Yeah, is, they're gonna see something that, come out with them shorts. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, uh, I, I think you could make this car look good, Rich. What do you think of this car, Mental? I have been hanging out with you way too long because <laughs> I like this car. <laughs> God. He hates to admit it. You know, yeah, it, it is like if you described it on paper, I would say it's awful. But man, it just in 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 appearance, it works. That very very bright with the subdued uh, the subdued 
silver exterior. I love it. And that, yes, it's an automatic. It is, but it's not. Because what it, a PDK is, is a manual transmission with a computer for a shifter and a computer for a clutch. And that is an two amazing. Clutches. Yeah, it is. <laughs> two clutches because yep. it's a dual. And it is an amazing transmission. And you could throw this to your mother-in-law and she could run down to the 7-Eleven. And you wouldn't worry about it because it's totally drivable. And then you would take it the next day onto a track day and embarrass a lot of people. I... I'm glad you covered this, and I love your point about being polar opposite because the other one was purple with an interior, but mechanically they're identical, and you'd put them on a track, and they'd be within a second of each other. And, uh, yeah, this is a, an amazing car. But to Deep's point, this time of year they're selling it because they live in Arizona and they don't realize the rest of the world is putting this stuff away. They are leaving money on the table. Someone is going to buy an amazing vehicle, and in the spring they're going to be the cool people at the PCA Club. When they all show up in their pleated shorts. Well, if it stays in San, Fr or not San Francisco, but uh, if it stays in Scottsdale, it's in the perfect place. Um, I think the biggest negative on this car is the high miles. I mean, seventy-seven thousand miles is some miles. The reliability on these is pretty good. Um, but you mentioned, it. yeah, you mentioned the track there, uh, mental. This car might be the faster car on the track because it is PDK. It's PDK. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think I would if I'm racing someone. I'm not that great a driver. I'm picking the PDK car over the manual, even though the manual would be more fun. My good. Uh, uh, my man, Ross Churchhouse in New Zealand is uh, on the chat, and he says he loves the color too. He's with Rich, even though he prefers a black interior guy. Um, and, uh, you know, look, it's GT silver. It's not polar silver. It's not Arctic silver. It's actually a really cool silver. And that it, this is a very, this is a very Porsche color combo. Uh, with all that said, uh, with all the great options this car has, high miles, bad time of year, uh, on a pretty good platform that has done really well with GTSs. Do we think this car is going to get anywhere close to 160? What's your bid, Michael Deeb? All right. JP, our car closes basically in a day, and it's sitting at $45,750 on just 11 bids. This car does not have a lot going for it at the moment, and that is kind of a bummer. So high mileage for sure. It's a convertible in the fall. And, um, and it's an automatic. I mean, maybe the automatic helps because of the generation of the car. But um, looking at all the support, most of the 991.1 GTS cabs that have sold have under 30,000 miles on them. And they all are selling in the $120,000, $125,000 range, some around one hundred grand. Um, there was a 40,000-mile one that sold on Bring a Trailer for $95,000 um, a, a little while ago. Uh, but... This car, at this time of the year, I think it's it's a dead stick. Um, I think that he's leaving he's leaving easily to, like it's it's worth less money because of the high miles, and he's leaving another ten grand on the table because it's the wrong time of the year. And with all that in mind, I think that the final bid on this car is going to be about sixty nine thousand dollars, where it will fail to sell. And the owner of this car, unfortunately, has too firm of a grip on it. He waited too long to sell it. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I love the car. I actually do really like this car. This is a car that I would be happy to own uh, at 65, and that's where I think it's going to fail to sell. Um, that's a long way to go on cars and bids. Like we keep saying, second day doesn't always bring all that extra money like it does on BAT, and this car is only at 45 grand, so it's got to come up another 20 grand just to get to my bid uh, tomorrow. That's a long way to go for cars and bids. Um, I hope it happens, but I think this car is DOA. What do you think, Rich? Right off the bat, I'm thinking 60, right? Yeah. That high mileage, even though the um, interior and the car looks to be in incredible shape, um, the high mileage is scary for myself as well, uh, 60. Do you think it'll sell at 60, or do you think that's a fail to sell? I think somebody will pick it up. Somebody, do you yeah. think that the reserve is set low enough that $60,000 buys this car? I don't know. <laughs> right it's a tough that's a tough call right that's i mean that's call. half like, that's half the challenge right because as a seller you have the right to set your reserve uh and if the car if the bids don't meet that reserve then you keep the car i mean if you were selling this car and you owned it there's no way that you would sell it for 45 which is what it's at now so you, that's why it's important to have that reserve there to kind of protect you uh from that a lot of times people go no reserve and we've seen over and over again that no reserve usually brings higher money uh but boy, are you putting yourself out on a limb if you do that Ray, mental? Ray, oh, let me talk go to ahead. Rich. Let me talk yeah. to Rich. Yeah, yeah, do it. 
Rich, when people are asking you questions about cars that you don't know a lot about, and you're doing a podcast, and it's being broadcast live, and JP keeps you know, re-asking you the same question over and over again in a slightly different context, do you feel like you're being cross-examined in a courtroom? or? <laughs> no, I just feel I'm uh, trying to defend myself when my wife asks yeah. me where you are. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Funny, a show or that. a deposition, right? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> seriously. Funny, yeah. I, I, I'm going to downtown Las Vegas, I promise. <laughs> You've been yeah. served. All right, mental, yeah. what do you think this car is going to bring? Uh, I, I think uh, I, I think the person's going to realize that they're they're in too deep. Cars and bids, they, they've shown that they can sell these oddball cars. And they've also shown that they advise their clients a lot better than some of the other platforms that we talk about. I think it's going to be 75, and I think it's going to sell. Nice. What? Okay. okay. It's a long wow, way to go on the last day, but it's entirely possible. Uh, what do you guys think this car will bring? Will it fail to sell, or will Doug get it set up to go to someone else's garage? Let us know in the comments below. All right. Before we wrap up, I mean, we've wrapped up predictions, but one thing I, I kind of wanted to bring up with you guys um, was something that I heard this week, uh, and I'm wondering if it's going to affect the value of classic cars, and I just wanted to talk about it really quick, especially since we have Rich uh, in the room. Um, and it's kind of a political topic, but we, I, I promise it's relevant and we won't get deep or anything like that here, but, um, My finger is on the button. He's right. Yeah. Mental's he's ready, ready to and then drinking here. game. And then, and then after JP does that, I want to tease mm. ahead Sunday's show. Of yeah. course. <laughs> we haven't, uh, the, the drinking game. I mean, nobody has said the I word yet in this whole episode. I can't, this is, might be the first <laughs> episode in like six months it, where we haven't said the I word. Interracial? <laughs> <laughs> it is not that. Um, no. So uh, in the most, re the uh, the infrastructure bill, that gajillion dollar omnibus thing that they just jammed through, uh, apparently there's a provision in there that requires all cars sold in the United States starting in 2026 be required to have a remote kill switch that can be accessed by law enforcement. Uh, have you guys happen. heard of this? Nope, but it's never going to happen. I, it's, it's already law. It is law now. I've, I have heard this story since I was uh, in my 30s. No, every, you every, guys. Every it's, iteration. It's past. It's yeah, law. It's, nobody's enforcing it, JP. There's nobody putting that on the car. It's never going to happen. Okay. And there's there, and you, why not? You, and you, you still haven't had the lawsuits from all the OEMs because they're too busy dealing with the UAW strike to mm -hmm. to, to, to they've have got it, three to years. Have they've got the three years yeah. to do it. I mean, that's an optimistic. This, this that's isn't an the optimistic first time. Take. I, this is not the first time that they've tried to work this through. Yeah, but they've never successfully gotten it through, and that's what you guys are failing to grasp: is that this is the law of the land, and now it has to be stricken down. It doesn't have to be passed. It has to be stricken down. Those are two different things. Rich, what do you think of that? And do you think it uh, has a chance of making it? I do. Recently, there's been a couple of lawsuits, I believe, in uh, Portland or Seattle, where the governor is suing car dealerships because she's blaming uh, car theft on how easy it is. And that's one of the options to prevent oh, that, it. Uh, it was uh, the Kia, the Kia TikTok yeah. challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a so, Kia or Hyundai's. I, both. They're, they're, yeah, they're okay. literally yeah, the, same, they're the same, same cars. Company, yeah. Yeah. So there's been a couple yeah. of lawsuits, and they're they're saying it's the fault of the manufacturers. So right. In order for us to protect the consumers, we need to have the manufacturers install this. So uh, like you had said, it's passed. Mm -hmm. Now, how are they going to enforce it? But I think because of the uh, two additional lawsuits that now people are going to be like, it's going to be enforced. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, you say that, uh, that the manufacturers are going to resist it. I don't know if that's the case. I haven't heard one way or the other, but if I'm in the manufacturer, um, this is not an expensive thing to, well, no, G all GMs have it. If the GMs have the, uh, the yeah, on star, yeah. all cars are, are, are basically connected to the grid already. So really it's just a matter of writing code in that allows a back door for someone to access it. Uh, and I think that the manufacturers are going to look at this and go, why the hell would we fight this? This is an uphill battle that, uh, look, the, you know, all the, all the moms are going to want this, all the, uh, all, you know, I don't see the public pushing back on this. 
uh, at Are we all. talking about just, just new cars, John? It's not used Just cars? new cars starting oh, in tw- well, 2026. That, that's, that's a hell of a qualifier. Okay. There, there, there's that's, a, there's, but that's what I said. All cars, there's, there's all also new cars a, sold in 2026 and on. And that's why I think it's relevant to bring up when it comes to classic cars because it's like, okay, they're not going to make you retroactively put that in your, in your Mondial that you just got off of cars and bids. So is that going to affect, like, uh, is that going to have a bump on classic cars? I mean, mental just shakes his head, but doesn't actually give an answer. All right, well, so, <laughs> the, and, and, and my reasoning behind, it's not going to have a bump on classic cars because uh, you, the, 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 the classic car market falls into you, your enthusiasts, your, your, your people that generally appreciate them, and your people that look at them as investments. And there is some mixing of those, too. And we just don't get, you know, wrapped around the axle about that. And I think that people that don't care about cars, either as investments, they just look at them as appliances, are not suddenly going to go find themselves shopping for classic cars. Now, they may still go buy an old K5 Blazer or an old pickup truck because they don't like the government meddling in their business. But they're not going to be spending a lot of money on this because money is also more government interaction. So they'll just go buy beaters. I think you'll also see a cottage industry of programmers that will just absolutely show you how to hack into this. Like the guy that just got the cease and desist letter from Mazda for getting his Google home assistant to talk to a CX nine, uh, to do various functions that Mazda didn't like him doing because it was using their proprietary code. So it's just going to be more of this, this whole cat and mouse game. But as far as it, the actual collector car market or the classic car market, nothing, the used car market, probably. Well, we've already, I mean, you're currently driving around a, a 95 993, uh, and in a lot and of. A, the, and a 72. Right. Well, not, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But my point of the 95 993 is that the 96s have a secondary air intake, which makes them impossible to smog. Um, so the, already people are making buying decisions. The 95s typically bring more money than the 96s and 7s because they yes. don't have to pass smog. And so there is. Uh, they bring more money to collectors not to people outside of this realm not to people outside of that that the the, the class no, they bring they, they bring more money to anyone who wants a 993 because they can avoid the right. restrict it's if you buy the 95 you're never going to have to deal with the 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 fact that your 96 and 97 is harder to be compliant when it comes to uh the government regulation so will a classic car uh, I, I think, well, I, and I don't and think is it's it, is, it, it. is it because they're harder to smog or because they're guaranteed to fail at 90,000 miles and cost you 10 grand? what's the difference? That's my point. I mean, that's exactly, um, it's be, and when it, it's not like the failure to pass or be compliant has any bearing on how the car operates. Otherwise it's a great, it's, it still drives fine. It's just that it won't comply. Uh, so here is another situation. Oh, by the way, one other thing that I forgot about this, uh, this bill, uh, not only do they require the cars to be, uh, to have the kill switch, but they can record your audio inside the car (laughs) so anything that you say while you're driving the car can be recorded so that they could potentially uh and the car and they're gonna want they want like uh the cars with the the that can tell if you're falling asleep or not they also want the car to be able to tell if you are impaired and potentially uh, kill switch the car if they if the car thinks that you're driving uh, while under the influence. Lots that I, I think that's a whole other podcast, and we could talk. Uh, that's probably a, a, a something to talk about on the Dur or Die Porsche podcast when we bring that back. But uh, uh, Rich, any other comments about that before we move on? None. <laughs> None whatsoever. He's like, I'm not stepping in that. <laughs> All right. Well, we got a bunch of stuff going on this weekend. Uh, Michael D, what do you got going in San Francisco? Cars and cafe. Cars und Cafe is happening. You're hosting it at the yeah. pit stop, yeah? Yeah, give me some assets so I can tell people because otherwise you know you can know. use the same ones. They don't. The, there's no date on the other ones. You can just use I the know. same photos. I just uh, love the cool ones. Yeah, well, wouldn't that be nice? So make some, take some pictures. All right, Cars and Cafe is happening the last Sunday of the month. It happens in San Francisco and here in Las Vegas. If you're in the Arts District of Las Vegas, Cars and Cafe will be going on at the Good Wolf. Uh, yours truly will be in Seattle, uh, up there speaking on behalf of the Pacific Northwest region of the PCA uh, at their tech ed session with Patrick Long. I'll be inter- uh, I'll be having an, I'll be interviewing Patrick Long about Luftkult. I can't 
get the words out and I can't say Luftkult, so whatever, we'll do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're in Seattle, uh, I think there are still tickets available. All the proceeds go to charity, so join us up there Saturday in Seattle. Go to the uh, PNWR's website and uh, get your tickets for that event, and hopefully I'll see you there if you're in the Northwest. Uh, Mental, anything going on in your neck of the woods this weekend? I will be at New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Halloween Hoopty Fest. I'm going to be racing a Mazda 3 with my two teammates and co-host of the Everyone Racers podcast. We are shooting for a class win. We think we've got the uh, legs to do it. Should be a great time. You can follow that on any of your racing monitor stuff or check out our Everyone Racers social media. We'll be doing updates from the track. Good luck to the team there. We hope you get a win. Uh, Rich! Where yes. do we find you on the interwebs? How do I want to buy a house? I want to buy a, a, a skyscraper. You're the guy in Las Vegas. How do we find you if we need you, which everyone needs you? I'm the guy. You can find me on Instagram at Rich Robledo and also my website, richrobledo.com, where you can kind of keep tabs as to what I'm doing in Valley and on the West Coast. And uh, when's the next uh, cigar event over at Red Rock? The next Cigars in Conversation will be November 9th. Uh, six to eight. And how do you go, how do you attend that if you sh- uh, choose to be a part of that crew? Just send me an email, rich at richrobledo.com. Because of some of the people showing up, we're trying to tidy up, you know, the uh, guest list. Okay. So it's just not drop-ins. Got a, got a RSVP if you want to come to this thing. Correct. I mean, the governor's showing up for crying yeah, out loud. Yeah. And they, somehow I got in. Uh, we'll put the link in the, uh, in the uh, description below so you guys can check that out if you want to get an RSVP for that event. Rich, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I hope Sunday. we didn't. Uh, yeah. What's that? Sunday, we're going to have uh, Blake from MB Market on the show, and we're going to cover Chris Carbine's S55. So uh, that's coming up on Sunday night's show. So a little tease ahead. Yeah, and uh, yeah, absolutely. That's going to be exciting. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see you Sunday night. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Show's over. Thanks, guys.